Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mora here and in today's video I wanted to talk to you guys about defense and how you can defend yourself in Street Fighter V. Defense of course is one of the most important elements of the game and it is one of the biggest differences between high level and mid and low level players. High level players usually really have choice driven options when they go when they are defending. They think about what they want to do while a lot of the mid and lower level players fall to autopilot which is the biggest issue and the biggest mistake you are you're gonna do in, in a fighting game honestly so let's first discuss the defensive options and of course the premier the main defensive option is gonna be blocking you block by holding down back or just back down back for low blocks of course blocking of course is really good but it gets beaten by throws right and this led to a development in Street Fighter V where many of the players, especially top players, you will see them doing walking back and then holding down back, walking back, holding down back. They do something like this. And the reason that this is very, very strong is because throw ranges in Street Fighter V is pretty short. So, for example, if Ryu is trying to do the same thing, if I'm just holding back, I can walk out. This, of course, means that I can punish him, for example, for doing something like this. So, this is powerful but your opponent can low shake you so for example if my, my opponent can do something like this if i'm just doing back he can shake me with a crouching medium kick and this led to the walk back down back thing which is one of the strongest defensive options because this will be pause see i just walk back a little and then down back And you get the punish so this is what you want to be doing this is why you shouldn't just hold back a mistake that a lot of players do is just hold back and they forget to do the down back and then they get punished for it so this is one of the better defensive options in the game and i would recommend actually using it a lot this is why this is really really good now the other defensive option is of course you know mashing three frame or mashing the button in general a string like ryu standing medium bunch twice and then a fireball this is only plus one on block so a three frame or mashing normals is good for challenging block strings that you think are, are fake so if your opponent is doing something like this and i know it's fake i can just mash my three frame here now this is gonna get beaten by tight frame traps so if your opponent did something like this and i try to mash here i'm getting counter hit so you have to be mindful of what you are trying to you know match three frame against but this is again really really good when your opponent start to do staggered pressure like that because that you know that i will not mash because i know that block string is tight he's gonna try to walk forward and challenge me again and this is again when the three frames start becoming good again this is a read based defensive option this is something that you can do based on a read. You are taking a risk. You are challenging something that you know you shouldn't challenge because you are expecting that he is gonna try to walk forward. In my opinion, you wanna do this. You wanna match three frame against strings like that if your opponent showed you that he is willing to do it. Many players, many players honestly will just, especially players, people like Kami players, for example, they will do something like this all the time and it is pretty good to mash against that if your opponent showed you that he is doing that a lot if you notice that this is a habit then i would recommend challenging with a three frame because if you do it without them convincing you to you are gonna get a lot of unnecessary damage which is kind of it, is, it sucks you're eating unnecessary damage pretty much the third defensive option and it, it, this one is pretty significant actually it is back dashes and when to utilize back dashes of course back dashes is really good against throws so if your opponent is trying to throw you you can just back dash and this is safe pretty much you can also use back dash during block strings especially block strings that aren't tight this is especially good mid screen so for example you can actually back dash this and you will not get hit it is important again to know what you are trying to backdash. Backdashing is really really good. Especially let's check out a situation like that one. In this case, I was able to backdash but I got hit in the air. 
This could be really good or really bad depending on the opponent and their character. If you're fighting a character who have to cancel into a specials that have a lot of recovery, this can be really really good. If you are, like let's say for example, you are doing the same thing, but Ryu does a Tatsu, right? This is the same exact situation but Ryu does a Tatsu. When I backdash here, I will re be a reset and I will be able to punish him. So, backdashing is really good against block strings that aren't tight. So for example, against this, you can just backdash. And it is also really good against throws. It is a defensive option that you should think about. Especially when your opponent is doing a block string that have a ton of hits prior. So for example, something like this. Again, it's gonna hit me airborne. It's not a big deal. Some things that you have to think about. When you start to do a lot of backdash, they are gonna start to do a lot of tighter block strings, which typically leaves you in a better situation when it comes to staggered pressure and guessing for the throws. And now I am going to talk about delay taking. It's of course one of the most used defensive options. Delay taking is when you take late. You basically are blocking for a while and then taking as late as possible. This is pretty good because this means that if say you are get knocked down, Kami tried to throw you, I was able to block the jab and then take her throw. So delay taking in general is something that is really really good and something that is commonly used honestly. But there are a there is a big anti delay tech tech and that is shimmies. So for example, if I try to delay tech, I am very vulnerable to shimmies like that. So it is one of the things that is a habit. Delay taking is a habit. It is something that you will see many players do all over the game, all over the different levels. But you have to be very careful of it. You have to think about when you want to use it and not just do it all the time. And chipping is something that is you're going to see a lot. And this happens all the time. So what you can do here, if you're expecting that your opponent is going to shimmy, shake them low. Low shakes like that are really, really good. You might think, okay, it, 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 it's, it's pretty stupid to try to go for a crouching medium kick while you're on block. But this is honestly something you will see top level players doing all the time. Checking your opponent low because you know they are trying to shimmy you. This is something that you have to get used to. It's, and that's what I am saying about the difference between low and high level play. Defense on the high level is all about choices. It's all about reads. I am making a read that my opponent is gonna try to shimmy me. Of course I can do something like this. Again the same thing. I can just backdash which is a safer option, but if I have the reads, I can just take it and, you know, expect the shimmy and get a ton of damage from it and then get a setup and all of that. So checking them low is the best option against shimmies. And this is why a character like Shan Li have such a good 3 frame because her 3 frame hits low. So it double functions as a 3 frame and as a low. One thing that's also pretty important is actually instant taking or just trying to take a grab as soon as possible. You can do this, especially for characters like Bison who have really big throw range. You can actually catch people try to shimmy you. It is gonna depend on your character range and your throw speed. But innocent shimming, especially on wake up, is actually a pretty legit thing to do. You will see players like Daigo doing it all the time. So delay taking is good, checking the shimmies is good, and one of the other main defensive option, of course, of course, is trying to do invincibility or something like wake up super. This of course is a very valid defensive option, but it can be baited and it's usually punished heavily if it is baited. The final de main defensive option is V-reversals. V there are three types of V-reversal and I'm gonna get more into that later about the different kind of V-reversal, which one you should use, at which situation, what is the use of each of them and is there is a better type of V-reversal over another? But in general, V-reversals is something that you want to do against attacks that have a lot of recovery. So for example, something like this from Kami, it is very good to V-reversal that. Especially with a knockdown V-reversal like Bison. But if I'm trying to V-reversal something like, say, a jumping or something like that, if I'm trying to V-reversal this, she would be able to block no problem. 
So against V-reversal, you don't want to match V-reversal instantly. You want to do it when you are trying to V-reversal something that have a lot of recovery or when you're a low on stun. If you're low on stun, the V-reversal will actually kind of, it will reduce your stun gauge by 10%. So it's not a bad idea. I will be covering this more in depth later in a series of episodes. So please stay tuned to that. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It all helps the channel a ton. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.